Hello, hello, and welcome to the Lost Archives for episode seven. Oh my god. Whoa! <laughs> my name is Owen. I'm the dungeon master for our campaign, The Tyranny of Dragons. However, this campaign is all about the players who will introduce themselves and their characters right now. Hey guys, um, I'm Simon. I'm playing the character of Wilpix, a lovely little gnome man who's a, a hunter of sorts. Um, yeah, just enjoying getting around. Has a few changes happening at the moment. Um, should be nice and interesting to see what happens this session. My name is Claire. I am playing Mira, who's a dragonborn sorcerer, uh, half red dragon, half silver dragon, and... Yeah, she's just having a blast. Get it? A oh, <laughs> very nice. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Andrew. I'm playing Azure Lighthalf. Um, I'm a Azamir monk. Uh, had a lot going on in the last few campaigns. Met a brother of sorts and uh, a few changes going on and more to go around the campfire stories. Yeah. Hi there, all. My name's Jared. I'm playing Emmerich. Um, he's a paladin who potentially has some beef with some gods. So, um, he revealed a little bit uh, in the last session at the campfire. So, yeah, we'll pass back over to Owen. Excellent. Thanks so much, guys. I'd just like to thank everyone who's been listening online. Um, thank you so much who've been watching the podcast on YouTube or listening to the podcast on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. Thank you so much for all the love and support. In the recent uh, couple of days, I've created a Facebook page called The Lost Archives. Uh, we've got our Twitter account up and running at Archives Lost. Um, so please hit us up on social media. We would love to hear from you. Um, yeah, we're, we're really keen to start engaging with you guys. Really exciting news. We're also going to be live streaming. So in the next couple of weeks, we are going to be on twitch.tv under The Lost Archives. You can join us on, uh, on Tuesday nights uh, round about seven o'clock we're going to be trying to get started by then so we will see you guys then and we'll have lots of really fun fun stuff there uh now on to the recap our adventure began in the bustling merchant city of oxenfurt at the lodge of the league of adventurers members of the tempest adventuring guild mira emric azua and wiltix traveled to the town of greenness just as a large force of kobolds bandits and cultists of the order of the dragon queen attacked after successfully repelling the attack led by Langdodrosa, a blue dragonborn Mira had known as a child, the party tracked the order down to a campsite hidden away in the woods. Leosin, the brother of Azua, had been captured by the cult, and the party devised a plan, uh, an intricate plan, based off distraction and deception to rescue him. Amazingly, the plan went off without a hitch, and the party were able to sneak in and out of the camp with Leosin mostly undetected. Langdodrosa, however, had become aware of Mira's presence and loudly offered her an opportunity to speak with him. However, the party moved out of earshot before they could hear any more. Regrouping at the camp previously owned by the rear guard, uh, the party had dispatched earlier that day, it was decided that resting for the evening before returning to investigate the camp further was the best use of the party's time. Sitting around the campfire, the party shared some information about their pasts, information they had previously been keeping secret. We learnt that Azua and Leosin were both Asimar, born from the same divine soul, and sent to the Feywild to learn and prepare for an impending apocalypse of unknown origin. Emric revealed that he had once been a member of a holy order, who had been betrayed and banished to a lair, one of the nine layers of the Hells. He was the only survivor of this betrayal, and believes that the betrayer gods, including Tiamat, were responsible. Wiltix took up position for his nightly watch, but soon fell asleep after hearing a wolf howl and found himself standing on a large grassland while two moons, Phoebe and Leto, the two moons of Lestea, were both full in the sky above, a phenomenon that Wiltix knew to be impossible. Under their light, an enormous black wolf approached him, and after he attempted to transform into his wolf hybrid form, the wolf asked if he wished to call upon its power, the power of Fenris. When Wiltix confirmed that he did, the gigantic wolf leapt at him and dove inside his chest, doing so triggering the transformation into the wolf hybrid, but this time a far more complete full form. We left off just as Wiltix was startled awake by his dream, hearing the voice of Fenris in his mind say, Yes, Wiltix, very good. And that's where we ended the last session. Wiltix, you <coughs> awaken, sitting by the campfire, having dozed off during your watch, the rest of the party in various um, sleeping bags and tents around the dying embers of the campfire. Um, 
above you you see no full moons you, you've left that dream place where you were before but you feel that power deep within you um, that call to action and movement well uh, first after having the uh, the lovely nightmarish dream i'd probably be uh checking just to make sure i haven't crashed myself really but um no i've uh, <laughs> fallen asleep on guard so um in a panic because uh you know had the wolf like that i'd just probably be uh checking to see if that dragon that flew overhead that um i believe it was azur saw um, that's right yep 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 um i don't see no any dragon no cobalt running around anything like that nearby make me a uh, make me a perception check uh, that is a yeah, 20 unnatural. Uh, wow. 20 unnatural is pretty good, uh, <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> as I'm sure you know. Uh, yeah, looking around, you can hear the sounds of rodents scurrying in the night, birds, uh, owls, other birds of prey, nocturnal birds of prey moving about, um, a lot of nocturnal animal activity nearby. No okay. sense, yeah, no sense of any kobolds or bandits or, or people nearby. However, your keen hearing picks out um, the sounds of thuds, almost like that concussive blast that you remember uh, from back in the town of Green Nest, hearing the, the um, heavy wing beats of a dragon. Um, you don't see anything, but you do hear those wing beats for a few seconds, very far in the distance, back the way you guys came from the, uh, the Order's camp. Um, they only last for a few seconds, about six or seven wing beats, and then silence. Did they sound like they were getting further away or just like it was possibly just... In the one spot, off? didn't sound like it was moving around too much. Okay, cool. Well, um, I'm glad that with my lovely natural one that I rolled uh, at the end of last session that I, I, I'm i pretty certain that no one's been uh, hurt or uh, no one's uh, gotten past on my watch. So obviously a great job that I've done. You, um, you, know, you, you know you've fallen asleep now that you've woken up. Um, you're yeah. very aware that you... Was supposed to be on watch you've drifted off had this very interesting dream involving the giant wolf involving fenris okay. um, and now I, I was also reawoken. on the i was also on the second watch at night wasn't i there's someone yes, else that's right. doing it okay yeah so, so you know, there's um, one more one more watch left okay well considering that i can use my lovely uh transformation once per short or long rest and i'll be in mm. the rest after this um, I feel like if I was waking up from that dream as well, I probably might have... Would I wake up transformed, possibly, or would I have woken up... You actually, No, you, you wake up in Wiltix form. You wake up as yourself. Oh, okay. Well, um, mm. I'm going to go out into the forest and uh, explore a little bit and see if I... I mean, when I tried to transform when I was in my dream state, I couldn't do yeah. so, so. That's right, yeah. I'd uh, like to, yeah, walk out into the forest, see if I can transform into a big bad wolf. Okay, yeah, so how far away from the camp are you heading? Um, look, I've got dark vision and everything like that, so I, I'd probably walk out a good... Uh, was, was there a fire burning or anything like that, or any light emitting from the camp? Yeah, so there's, there's a very low fire burning away, probably just the embers of a fire at this point, but enough light that with your dark vision you can you can see it and make it out from a, so from just, a distance. Probably just past like the the tree line just a little bit and um, just a little bit further away. So I suspect that I can still see the camp, but I wouldn't think that unless someone woke up and was looking for me, for me from there, that they would see me as well. So yeah, I'll walk out there and I'll transform back into my wolf creek to see if there's any differences than uh, what I felt last time. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, so what I'll get you to do is. Um, roll me just a you've already rolled a perception check what I'll get you to do is roll me a survival check just to sort of figure out where you're moving how you're going um, mm -hmm. you have advantage on this and we'll just see yeah. oh that's a nine nine's good uh, you have advantage and <clears throat> plus one eighteen very nice uh, as you walk on out into the darkness, you make your way through the small copse of woodland trees that led you uh, into this place. Um, the campfire is quite a protected area, so this is more sort of figuring out where you're going and how to get back again as well. Um, you walk for 
two, three minutes to you're far enough away that you think no one's going to wake and know that you've left. What would you like to do? Yeah, I'm uh, just going to see if I can get my claws to come out and, uh, yeah, start the transformation. So, um, now that I'm out that further that way, I'm assuming I've transformed. I'm nice, larger, I'm hairier. I, was I... Hairier. <laughs> um, so, we were saying last time, Do I, I get a little bit taller as well, don't I? Yeah, so you, you know that when you uh, activate your uh, wolf form, yeah, it does increase your height by about a foot and a half. Okay, well, I'm going to go for a, a little bit of a, a late night run, and I'm also going to see if I did hear those um, wing beats off into the, uh, the distance as well. Can I see, I know that we were staying slightly off the main road, can I see the Ooh. down the main road or down that ridge at all, if I was to walk a bit further up? Yeah, so you can still see the main road um, from where you are. You've sort of wandered a little bit, sort of halfway between the main road and the camp um, into mm -hmm. a small area of field. So you can still see the main road, absolutely. Okay, well, I might go for a little bit of a, uh, a run. Uh, I don't know if I would do that full legged I don't think I would, but... Um... <laughs> so, yeah, so as you, as you activate the wolf form, you feel that, that power, that... Um, drive deep within you that fills you and as it does your bones stretch and crack hair growing across your hands and arms um, your face pulling out into a into a slight muzzle not quite the full hybrid form that you had activated uh, while in your dream this is your normal hybrid form that you've, you've activated for the sort of quarter wolf shall we say um, yeah. as you grow um, your clothes magically incorporate into your form. We're doing this like a drilled wild shape, otherwise you're just going to keep tearing through shoes and that's not fun. Um, yep. <laughs> your clothes are sort of magically incorporated into your form like a drilled wild shape. Um, and you can, yeah, feel feel that power, that drive as your um, senses heighten to those of a wolf. And you go for a run. You move across the lands. How far away from camp are you willing to go on this run, just out of interest? Um, it was just going to be to the... Um... The mouth of the ridge, essentially, that um, we'd gone down. Because I heard those wing beats, which I'm assuming came from the, the main camp. I just want to see if there's anyone that started moving up or down that ridge. Because we thought that uh, they'd be re relocating soon. So, just up around that way. Just going for a bit of a stroll or a bit of a bit of a run. There's the uh, the wall. Probably a good cover as well at night. So, Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you, you go for... A run you travel across the lands moving quickly um very very fast in your wolf form able to to move very very quickly um as you move across you see prey animals scurry away from your presence uh you feel that energy and that power and you feel free you feel good oh great well now that i've had my bit of a run i haven't seen obviously any other movement or anything like that for many guards from the camp i'm assuming nothing around this area um as you sort of stick close to the campsite you don't see much of anything else going around okay well um i'm gonna go back then because i don't want to go too far from while it's on my watch i'll head back that way and uh who was can't actually remember who was up next in the order for uh the staying up for the night watch was it you emmerich or was it well, I, um, I'm definitely happy to do one. I'm not sure who's going to do this. Samira, do actually. The... If we're, yeah, up we're up to three. We're up to three? Or. Yeah. Or... Yeah. Yeah, as yeah, yeah. we'll first. So, me then. Um, yeah. Yourself. Oh, okay. So, so, yeah, I'll, I'll finish last then. Easy. Easy. All right. Well, um, I'll head back to the camp. And I'm assuming, is it roughly around time for us to swap, uh, swap shifts on? It is. It's exactly the time for you to swap shifts. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, while in wolf form, I'll. Um, give Mira a bit of a nudge and uh, Mira, time to get up it's your turn for, for watch so Mira as you awaken you see um, Wiltix in his wolf form, his hybrid wolf form um, yeah, large canine teeth glowing yellow eyes, large claws um, up on those digitigrade wolf paws um, yeah Probably a bit of a scary sight to awaken to. Yeah. Uh, look, she's... Can I roll for something to see if she's scared? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Because it could go bo either way with Mira. <laughs> uh, you can... Yeah, if you want to roll a whiz save, I reckon. Uh, 
13. Oh, uh, that's not bad. No, that's not too bad. Um, yeah, you, you don't feel more fear than just that flash, that first flash of fear. Um, and then the fear subsides and you you recognize wolf ticks, um, even in this form. You recognize wolf ticks. Oh, hello, Rocky. <laughs> Uh, as he <laughs> <Whoa, whoa. Whoa, Rocky. laughs> <laughs> it's the bandits <laughs> <laughs> oh, a ghost uh, yeah. uh, and I would have got it away with it too you pesky adventures <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry yeah. go uh, I scared me oh, you... well, you've seen what I look like before Mira. It's, is, do I really look that bad at night just a little bit of a different look. I thought I'd uh, stretch your legs, and the idea is to scare people off as they uh, they try and approach the camp. It's just it's a wolf just... man. That's like nightmare inducing, man. Fuck that. I was just startled, is all. Well, I, I feel it's a bit judgmental judging me uh, by how I look. Don't see me <laughs> going out and saying, "Ah, oh, look, it's Mira, the uh, the big silver red dragon person." No, that would just be. Uh, <laughs> Be racist, wouldn't it? <laughs> it is. It is a little bit. Is a little bit mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, uh, Mira, Small, sorry, smoulders look, away. <laughs> She's the... I'm a little bit grumpy. It's my turn for the rest now. So uh, I think it's your turn. You might want to take watch. I did hear. Some did you wind... see anything? Didn't see anything, but I did hear some uh, wing beats of a dragon over at the uh, the camp that we uh, escaped from today so and i believe uh, azul also saw the dragon fly across to that camp so uh i'd keep an eye out yeah i don't know if they'd be starting it you know first thing in the morning or whatnot but uh i'd just be keeping an eye out from that direction yeah good well you sleep well i will i will dream easy all right well i'll uh go over to the corner the I'm a wolf. Would I just do like a? I'd walk in a circle and then just go huh, and sit like. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like a yeah, no. that's what happens. That's exactly. Do that. What I'll just throw a sheet over top of me as well. So yep. all good. Uh, perfect, Mira. Would you like to roll me a perception check? A perception. Sure. That's one of my best stats. Yeah. That's a five. <laughs> five. Um, yeah. Could you please roll me a d20? Am I going to fall asleep too? Natural 20. Wow. Natural 20. Um, Bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, no, no. Natural 20 is really good. Um, so, for the, the thing that happens, um, Mira, as you sit and contemplate, you find yourself very easily distracted from... Um, keeping watch and what's happening. You see Will Tix as he turns around and drops into his wolf form and sleeps curled up like a dog. Um, you see the others, Leosin and Azua, um, propped up against the tent, sleeping quietly, chests rising and falling in tandem. You see Emric, probably muttering under his breath in his sleep as dark dreams cross his mind. And as you look up, you see a shooting star crest across the horizon moving from east to west before slowly disappearing from view and you feel within you a power an energy you think that you have the power to change fate just once just on something small in the next 24 hours Oh. Uh, basically, what you can do is you can re-roll a d20 dice. Oh, that's what is this? What is this? shooting? Shooting star. You um, you witnessed oh. a shooting star. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. So yeah, I've got a I've got an encounter was, table um for star, nighttime things. Was it an asteroid? It was actually a comet because you can see the uh, coronal tail moving out from behind it, which uh, is unique to comets. Both icy and fiery. Both icy and fiery. Very true. She takes this as a... She's not a superstitious person, so she probably wouldn't take it as a sign either way, but... Just sits and watches, thinks about 
yeah. where she's going. Yeah, absolutely. Alrighty. Apart from that, your watch passes without incident. Um, and as morning begins to rise, as the sun rises over the crest of the hills, um, the bird song changes to a much more diurnal group. You hear the twitterings of various small larches, and the others begin to slowly awake around you after uh, completing a long rest, and all of you have completed a long rest. Hell yeah, you didn't even need to do a watch. Well, so the way that it works is when you guys roll, um, uh, when, you're, when you're on a watch, I roll the dice, and then I get you guys to roll a perception check, and then I roll based on what your perception check is for something that happens with you guys. So I've got encounter tables, like statistics of encounters during the night and things like that. Um, I rolled no encounters for either, like any of these nights, which is great. <laughs> the whole night I didn't roll a single encounter. Perfect. Um, but I did have, so when Wiltix rolled the natural one for his, his perception check, um, I, I had a quick look at the table and one of the options was the person falls asleep. And that's and I thought, well, that's perfect. We can do Wiltix's dream sequence now. Um, yep. But for mirrors, because... Um, there wasn't anything specific we needed to do storyline with Mira. I was more than happy to let her roll, and the natural twenty meant that she got the the uh, comet, got the uh, shooting star. Easy peasy. Yeah, um, I should actually say so. Uh, at the end of last episode, each of you was awarded an inspiration. Um, oh shit! Yeah, hey. yeah. Each of you okay. was awarded inspiration. Hey. So um, Azua for uh, his role play with Leosin and uh, working out with his with his brother slash uh, half soul. Um, Why? Thank you. Wiltix for his handling of the dream, Emric for sharing the information, and Mira for um, just the most incredible uh, plan I've ever seen inside of a camp, burning <coughs> down a tent full of people, um, yeah. and not even not even knowing. Like she she walked away from that having no idea, uh, image that she had wrought. I think we just deserve it for actually pulling off a D and D plan. That's just unheard of. <laughs> Actually, pulling a D and D plan off just doesn't. Matter. And with such charisma as well, like. Do... <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, for for having for having a plan work, um, for having the plan work flawlessly all the way through, uh, that was absolutely worthy of a, um, worthy of an inspiration for all of you. I think uh, Emric knocking out a player with uh, just the one punch was also pretty good. Oh yeah, that oh, was. Yeah. Our, that one, was our, one, our resident one punch man. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, that was so good. That was really cool. It was almost too good, actually. It's like almost too, too good. Yeah. All right. Uh, well. Yeah. Well. Anyway, so it's it's, it's... morning. So, uh, you guys awaken the next morning, feeling refreshed, feeling empowered, feeling good, having had a long night's long night's sleep. Um, after the events of the previous day, which had been very full on. Um, to have a moment of quiet and contemplation around a campfire was really good for you guys. All right, well, uh, get up, stretch my leg a little bit, and uh, ask Mira, did you uh, see anything last night? Anything interesting? Anything we should know about? Comet. Comet, okay. Um, anything that uh, would interest me about that, or just general astrology? I know that you're into those kinds of things, so. Yes. I was tracking it with my instruments, but oh. uh, no, nothing really else right. happened. I didn't even see the dragon. I was scanning the skies for it. Yeah, I, I assumed that, uh, you know, waking up so comfortably after a, a nice long rest that uh, might not have been too uneventful uh, a watch for you. But um, look, uh, uneventful watch is a good watch, so... Um, so what's what's the plan for today, guys? Do we want to uh, sneak up back up and see if they're uh, packing up and on their move today, or were we going to head back to the town? And uh... I thought the, <coughs> I thought our plan was to, to go back to town and get to get some reinforcements, but we can definitely go up and check and see yeah. uh, see what their movements are like today before we before we head off. Oh, exactly. Hearing the uh, the wings of that dragon last night just makes me think that there is movement happening. So uh, they could be out of here any time now. Um, Emric, what do you think? You're the uh, one that's normally gung ho, ready for battle. Would you uh, be willing just to do a bit of a scout out with us? Before, uh, <laughs> so um, Emric is Emric is propped up against the tree, and when he starts hearing the words, he actually starts rousing. He's like, uh, "What?" 
go. What's going on? Emmerich, Emmerich, you uh, you slept you slept through your watch, mate. There's uh, we've been robbed. <laughs> <laughs> what? He gets yeah. up in a in a hurry. He looks around. He, he's clutching his halberd because he always sleeps with his halberd. <laughs> like it's like a teddy bear. <laughs> he look. He's like, oh, thank God, my halberd's uh, still here. No, no, that's okay. But I uh, talking to Mira. It looks like there was a. Uh, the media shower last night, and uh, they used that as a distraction to try and sneak into the camp. <laughs> well, what do we, uh, what do we want to do there? What, what do we, what, what, what's going on? No, no, I've already handled it. Okay, Emric. Um, you know, I'm, I'm clearly the brawn of the group, so <clears throat> didn't want to disturb you. But uh, now that you're up, just want to know if you'd be willing to help scout out about the uh, the bandits that we were, you know, running from yesterday before they got on move, or did you want to head back to the town as well? And, uh, first. I'm not much of a scout. Definitely more. You point me at a thing and I kill it. Okay. Well, um, would you like to kill anything <laughs> now or with some friends? Look, I'll, if you guys want to go and scout, I'll definitely uh, tag along and we can uh, get it sorted. Okay. We'll see what's going on. And if anything gets close, I'll, uh, I'll give it a good old one, two, eh? Bit of a smash. Yeah, that no, sounds sounds great. Well, okay. As always voting to go back, I'm voting to uh, to have a bit of a scout before leaving. Mira, what's your what's your vote? You're the uh, the brains of the group, I believe. Mm, yeah. That, that's Do you know what her intelligence is? But sure. Uh, I don't know. Probably though. more than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, just, Actually, just out, out of interest, what is people like? What what is your intelligence? Because it's eleven. 11. Oh, 10. Really? Am I the most intelligent person in this Oh my group? god, Will Tix is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are yeah, you yeah. really? No. Oh, Thank actually, you. no, Emmerich is, uh, his intellect is like 13. Nah, Will Tix is higher. No, oh. I'm joking. Wow. <laughs> my, my, my intellect's my dump stat. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> it is everyone's, I think. Mira is hey, actually hey, hey, just hey. organized. That's, that's it. She's just organized. Um, <laughs> you seem thinking that you're like meant to be like this scholar character. That's, that's okay, fair enough. She's All right. Secretary. She's great. She's just really organized. <laughs> I, Intelligence I like isn't that. everything. Intelligence isn't I everything. Be... Well, you know what? Yeah, it's, it's about what matters on the inside, isn't it? So, uh, you know. And inside, she's a dead hearted, cold killer. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, yep. Cool. Oh my God. Um, um, yeah. Anyway, you... uh, Mira, what's your vote for today? Would you like to uh, do a bit of a scout out with us before? Heading back to town, or do you want to just... Uh, I think we sh well, should probably see what is left. They might have all just hit it off. I thought the idea was that we'd ambush them on the way to wherever they're next going, to pick them yeah, off a bit more easily. That sounds right. It sounds like I should uh, remember these kinds of things, but I've had a good rest. In I, I wrote it down, Wiltix. I wrote oh. it down, so I wouldn't forget. Oh, perfect, perfect. All right, well... Um, who wants to join me heading up the uh, heading up to the the ridge then and seeing if uh... yeah I'll come with you perfect anyone else just scout and see what they're doing perfect we don't have perfect. any like valuables in the camp do we uh, no you guys have just literally set up your own little thing um, yeah okay so, I'll, um, I'll come along I think from the sounds of it everyone's going there right I think um, so yes yeah 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 cool. okay in that case um, Leosin will will absolutely join you guys um he'll sort of look at you look at the four of you um i think maybe isn't it worth just packing up the camp have some rations and then let's let's head on over as a group it's uh, about 20 30 minutes away from here let's let's just head back as a, as a group what do you say sounds great do we want to bring the tents with us or leave them here pick them up on the way back maybe or unless you think we'll need them oh well look, look we didn't come here with tents we've uh, just commandeered that from our lovely lovely dead guard friends that uh, oh. we get spashed off on the way. So, right. Um, I'm, I'm not too fussed if we lose them, to be honest. But uh, Wait, Leave them here, then. If, if we come back this way, let's get them up. But otherwise, I'm happy to leave it. Perfect. All right, let's do that. Perfect. Uh, okay. So you guys enjoy uh, breakfasts of beef stew left over from Mira's cooking the night before. Um, very adequate beef stew. You feel, feel a bit refreshed in the morning. Um, you pack up the tents, but leave them where they are, and then begin to walk back towards um, oh. the camp. 
Uh, after about 20, 30 minutes of walking through the underbrush, uh, you come across the gap in the two cliff sides that is the entrance to the camp. And I will bring you guys across to the map. Hey! Ah, the map. Ah, yes. <laughs> Familiar ground. You've been here before. Um, yeah, I've, I've placed you all. You should have full control of your characters. Please tell me if you don't. Um, yeah, that should all be all be working. Perfect. Um, yeah, look, so, my, my mind has been crap, so I'm not seeing... Oh, I'm seeing the map, but it's uh, very blurry, so I'm going to have to be using my par partial imagination. So we'll see okay, we'll use theatre of the mind. Uh, so I'll quickly describe the camp again for you guys. Been, you've been through this area before. Um, looking through the camp, you can see that it is uh, groups of tents separated uh, into different areas. There was a, a guard tower set up right at the entrance to the camp, which had been previously manned by a number of cultists and kobolds. It has since been abandoned. And as you approach the camp, you can see that it doesn't look like anyone's out here. Um, the tents as well are similarly abandoned. These groups of tents uh, just at the entrance to the camp uh, have actually been taken down and all you can see are the spaces where they used to be. Uh, as you walk further into the camp, if you choose to do so, heading through this way, you can see that the series of tents over towards the other guard tower that was located right in the very middle of the camp up on a small rise, uh, on a, uh, a plateau, that ca uh, that group of tents that Mira had set on fire has completely burnt down and it actually looks like the fire had spread to the group of tents a little bit further south again. Um, quite a large number of tents have been completely burnt as you enter the, uh, enter the campsite. You don't hear any people, you don't see any people as you walk on through the entrance. Uh, this initial area seems to be pretty clear. The um, camp seems to have been abandoned at this point, at the very entrance. I'm, I'm cautious to keep on going further in. I wonder if we should go up onto the ridge in higher ground. It's far too quiet here. I, uh, I, I don't tend to blame you there. Um, can I? Oh, can I? Would I know what a? Uh, no, I've seen, I've seen this the giant dragon. From uh, when we were at the at Greenrest, wasn't it the the town? That is correct. Correct. Um, which and I was only about I wasn't that far away from it, so I would probably know what it smells like. Can I smell if I can <laughs> sense a dragon still in the area? Like a make me know. make me a uh, perception or investigation using a sense of smell. I believe you have advantage. I do. Uh, that's a seven. So. Uh, you can roll again because you've got advantage. Advantage. The nurse. 19. No, sorry, to be even more than that. It'd be 21. Uh, yeah, so you can very clearly smell the, the, the familiar scent of the dragon that you had smelled previously in town. Um, for viewers at home and listeners at home who might not know what a dragon smells like, I'm going to have to improvise now what a dragon would smell like. Uh, thank you for that, Simon. Um, <laughs> the smell that assaults your nostrils is... Uh. It's a very subtle, almost a, a chitinous smell, that smell that you get from, um, I guess, from insects and, and the, the exoskeleton on insects. A very sort of subtle, um, slightly woody-ish smell with a hint of sort of animal odor to it as well. So maybe like a hint of wet dog mixed in with um, uh, something a bit more chitinous and a bit more hard, and then a bit of a leathery sort of smell too. Uh, if anyone in the uh, who's listening has smelt a snake, uh, <laughs> a little bit I, similar I have to that. smelt a snake, yeah. Yeah, it's sort of like a dry smell, um, but a bit of like an animal sort of smell to it as well, like that... that uh, yeah, like a wet dog is the best way to describe it. Uh, that's what you smell. Um, thank you for that opportunity to describe what a dragon smells like. Oh, you look, can... I knew that's something you were probably looking forward to doing. Um, <laughs> your uh, DMing career, so I'm glad yep. that I could be a part of that can... history. Do you know what? I actually, that's it. I've ticked off all of my all of my things. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, the smell is coming from further down to the south. Uh, and as you sort of have a bit of a look around and focus your senses through your sense of smell, um, you can see large gouges in the earth towards the very centre of camp near the tents that have been burnt down that look like claw marks from something landing 
and then maybe taking off as well. Uh, and looking even closer, you can now see cart tracks. Um, you can see footprints all sort of congregating around this area, um, as well as a number of cart tracks then heading back out the way that you guys have just come back out the exit uh, slash entrance of the camp, which you immediately, as you look at, know must be fresh because when you came in uh, yesterday, only a few hours ago, none of this was here. Okay, and just from the uh, sense of smell, am I get, getting the idea that the smell is faint more in the sense that like the dragon's no longer there or that it possibly could still be roaming around somewhere nearby? Uh, the smell is old, maybe a couple of hours old. Okay, so um, got the impression. So I'd, I'd, I'd let uh, Azul, Mira, and Emmerich know. Uh, I can't, I, I can't smell any dragon. Um, so they might have all gone, but I, Azul is probably right. It's the the safer option would be the higher ground. Yeah. Um, so where would you guys like to go? Well. I mean, I don't know about everyone else, but I'd like, I like—I essentially want to try and get into that cave that was on the mm, yeah. uh, the southeast side. So, um, whatever the shortest path around would be, um, or that thing. southern um, ridge, I suppose. So basically, the way that you went last time down through this southern area, past <clears throat> the tents that originally held the slaves and workers and prisoners that had been kept by the order. Okay, well, um, do we all want to go down that way? Yeah, I, I, I think we should uh, go into stealth first. Oh, yeah, of course, so, yeah. yeah. Alrighty, and everyone then, can make me uh, stealth checks, everyone who's going. Oh, it's God. Oof, that's not great. <laughs> it's an inspiration. <laughs> it's, it's that one. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to just walk around with a drum. Oh, oh, <laughs> you're a monk. <laughs> so, uh... Ugh. I rolled a nat one. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. we, got, we got two nat ones. Two nat ones. Hey guys, hey, two, we're here. Hello. Oh my, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> two wow. nat ones. Two nat ones is lots of fun. We just yeah. run into each other. <laughs> That's what happened. So we, we all decided I, I that we want to take the ridge and be quiet, and we Look, just started. I just I walked with... right up to Emmerich and I just so that, played the drums on his armor. That stealth. <laughs> that stealth. Um, roll is actually a zero. Because I'm oh, minus wow. one. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> <laughs> so you've actually you've just created a big flag that says we're here as opposed to even trying to Basically I've just stumped up to the ledge and like, what can you see? <laughs> hey, um, everybody As you guys move around camp making huge amounts of noise. Basically the way I picture this you guys are Whoa, those tents have burnt down. Was that you, Mira? <laughs> and then shushing each other really like, shh. Oh, yes, of course, we're being stealthy. Oh, my God. There's big claw marks there. Shh, okay, big coke, coke. And so just continually this cycle of shushing each other and, and um, going through that. And that's just how your passageway through town works. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, as you guys... So you're heading down towards the south. Let me just chuck... Oh, that's fun. Here we go. Beautiful. Um, so, oh. Excellent. As you guys head down towards the south here, you spy a group of um, men and women, uh, mostly humanoid. One uh, tabaxi is with them. One cat person is with them. Um, and they seem to be around a animal carcass that two of them are working on skinning while one of them is fletching arrows and putting in um uh putting in uh, uh feathers into the into the arrow um they immediately spot you as you guys approach they look at you go back to their work don't seem too bothered um just quick question owen what does the camp actually look like populous wise because i was just too busy like trying to help with the stream problem so i'm a bit i got a bit distracted so could you okay, just the camp quick... the camp seems to be completely deserted um there doesn't seem to be anyone anyone here it's been mostly abandoned apart from these four people here who are set up skinning an animal fletching some new animals uh, fletching some new arrows oh, right so it look like um, they were part of this group? They, they're they not dressed in the traditional 
robes that you've seen before. They're mostly just wearing leather armor, um, hide armor. Nothing too crazy. There's no, like, insignias or any, like, even to say that they're, like, a mercenary company? No. Um, okay. Nothing, nothing really going on there at all, which is, yeah, a little bit bizarre. So being a bit impulsive, Emmerich's going to look around. He's going to look at everyone, wink. And he's going to walk off because he's done, been doing this a lot lately. He's going to walk up to the group. And um, as he approaches, he's like, hello there. Yeah. Um, I'm they, just, I'm just they, look up, they look up as you move forward. Just grunt. Continue working. Don't really seem too. I'm gonna say. Um, I'm gonna say to them. Have you guys? Uh, where's the rest of the uh, the camp went off to? Uh, the Tabaxi, who was currently fletching the arrows, looks towards you. They left last night. Yeah, we've been uh, told to keep hunting, get more food. Uh, which way have they headed off there? We're a bit. Uh... We're a bit, uh, we, we got lost. We are part of the rear guard. We got a little bit too keen chasing some uh, people off. Uh, they left heading to the west, a large group. The rest in all different directions. Um, one of the other hunters looks towards you. Um, uh, a female uh, human. Goes, yes, uh, they've all gone off. Uh, something spooked them, I think. Uh, We've been told to hang around and keep a watch out. And with that, she spits on the ground. But uh, it's a bit beneath us, so we're just going to continue doing our previous jobs of hunting food for those in the cave. Uh, is the uh, is the cave still, you know, operational? Yes, they have left it in mostly full operational. Interesting words that you use. Yes. I uh, speak in Draconic. Watch what you say there, friend. All of them sort of look at you blankly. And the woman goes, Oh, uh, what? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. I look at them and then I sigh. Mm. Yeah. Is it uh, in common? Is this amateur hour? Do you I'll guys seriously not know Draconic? I'll walk forward and just stand next to Emmerich and they, hold my arms. They look at you. Um, no great response or reaction um, as okay. you walk up, and they and the, the sort of Tabaxi looks back at his comrades, um, a halfling uh, who'd been a male halfling who'd been working on skinning the animal, blood across his hands and wielding a small knife, uh, looks up um, towards you guys and goes, "Oh, oh, I think I think they think that we're part of the group. They think we're like part of the cult. No, 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 no. We're just being hired as hunters." Oh. Oh, that's all right. Keep going about your business. We'll, uh, we're going to have a check at the cave and see how everyone's uh, going there. Then we'll, when then we'll uh, meet up with the main group. Okay, we, we were going to do that anyway, but all right. All right, well, as you were, we'll, uh, we'll see you a bit later on. Great, okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, have no, they don't care. <laughs> they're like, they don't care. They're just here to do their job. They don't want any business with this cult shit. You, you get the sense that they're not particularly involved. Um, they seem to be hunters who've been brought in, maybe to um, yeah, to, to continue working. They don't they don't seem too too worried about being being there. They're not too worried about you guys either. Uh, what would you guys like to do? I'll um I'll look at Mira and I'll say in Draconic. So uh, looks like we should check out this cave. I don't know where it is, but you guys uh, have an idea, don't you? It's just at the end of this bluff. Draconic. Oh. Zua, unless you know how to speak. Oh, sorry, yeah, I, I didn't say, yeah. I'm, I'm just sorry. assuming that's what you're talking about. <laughs> I just didn't want them to hear me being like, hey, where's the cave? Because I just said to them, I know where the cave is. I have no idea. So in Draconic, I want to ask Mira a question. I missed the in Draconic bit. My apologies. No, good. <laughs> well, I say in Draconic, I believe it's just at the end of the bluff. <laughs> then I uh, gesture for you to lead the way. How, how does uh, Draconic sound to us again? Yeah, Owen has it sound again. <laughs> <laughs> also, Owen, what does a tabaxi smell like? <laughs> so, okay, no, tabaxi's easy. Tabaxi, tabaxi's easy, yes. I'm more than happy to tell you what a tabaxi smells like. A, a tabaxi literally just smells like a cat. It just smells. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say dog. Oh, well. Tabaxi are cat people. 
are they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. crazy. Um, <laughs> it just smells like it smells like a cat. There's sort of a, a, a yeah, Kajita. Kajita's wells if you have coin. Um, it just smells like a cat. Um, what was the other question? What does draconic sound like? Um, so draconic, if you don't speak draconic, sounds like it's very harsh, very guttural. Um, it uses a lot of sounds from the back of the throat. Um, similar to Dwarvish in a way. Dwarvish actually uses a lot of the back of the throat sounds. Um, so draconic sounds like rock fever, uh, very deep, very guttural. Nice. Mm. Love it. Um, love it. Uh, does anyone want to like sniff the dirt? Um, maybe <laughs> like lick a tent. What do the tents taste like? Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Just see, just see the... Will ticks over there. <laughs> Give it fibrous. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've um, got to take advantage of my sense of smell and hearing. So. That's fair uh... <laughs> what what does what does a tent sound like? Um, yeah, you guys sounds like the rustling wind. Well, regardless, me and Mira had a chat, and I'll uh, gesture for her to lead the way to the cave, and then I'll look at everyone else, and I'll say, "All right, guys, follow us." In Go common, non draconic. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, you guys head on down. Um, as you pass through the tents, most of these seem to still be intact. Um, none of these were burnt down or destroyed. As you come to the main section, uh, where previously there had been a large tent that had been guarded by a number of guard drakes, um, which are very draconic-looking dogs, uh, as well as some very heavily armoured-looking uh, individuals, the tent has actually been abandoned. Uh, oh, I think you might be able to hear uh, hear my dog Lucy in the background. Uh, no, it's Wiltix. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can... because of the dogs from the past. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's ghost dog. Um, the the tent is gone. Um, it is completely been dismantled. There is no sign left of it. Whoa! So, um, and is, have, have, are there any guards? Uh, any really... No. So the the and the cave entrance itself, which you can see from completely unguarded. Previously, there'd been a large. Um, wooden door blocking off the entrance of the cave that has actually been left uh, partially open um for for youtube watchers uh, and stream viewers the tent that i have just indicated here with this uh, glowing red circle uh, is no longer active and what you guys do see down to the south is a man a body tied to oh my God. some stakes um <laughs> that, <laughs> however something is different about the body since you left it the head has been removed and is sitting oh. at the feet, sitting at the feet of the corpse. And huh. as Leosin walks up and sees this, he looks at the four of you, looks at the body, looks back at the four of you and gulps, but says nothing further. I look, uh, at, the, I look at the guy on the thing and I go, oh, what happened to him? He didn't have a good time, did he now? I look at everyone in confusion. Like, I'm, I don't know what happened. No, you've got no idea. That's... Uh... That poor, poor man. <clears throat> uh, well, got to be going. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I thought you were going to explain what happened, but you're like, nope. Nope. <laughs> okay, let's go. Uh, <laughs> There's no time. Um, Leo, so to think that you still wanted to stick around to learn some more information, mate. I think... Uh, Emric, um, um, hang on, I'm just going to move Leo, because currently I've formed you into the shape of a penis, um, so I'll just move Leo. <laughs> Emric, Emric sort of just shrugs when, you know, whatever, when we look at the guy, he's like, ah... I, I, I sort of say under my breath, ah, oh, well, he was weak anyway. Didn't deserve life. Leosin will look over to you as you say this. He was unfortunate enough to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. That I look at him and I say... Very easily have been me. I look at him and say, unfortunately, he was weak. He was never going to last anyway. Right, okay. Fair enough. It's, it's, you're entitled to what you want to think. Yeah, Emric's pretty. Uh, he, he doesn't share the the common view. <laughs> yeah. Um, perfect. You guys are standing at the entrance to the cave, which previously had been guarded. Um, a wooden door set up, partially blocking the view in. Um, what you can see uh, as you look in, uh, it's very dark inside the cave, especially outside in the light. Um, but you can sort of see looking in. There is. Uh, a man dressed in robes wearing very order of the dragon cult of the dragon style 
who, as you guys approach, very not stealthy with two natural ones, <laughs> looks at you, squints, and then moves back further into the cave. Very and that's creepy. it. That's it. I'm thinking out of character. I just realized that Mira has already approached this cave once, and the cave guards may very well have recognized it just then. Out of character. I, the ca- I didn't approach the cave, I approached the caravan. The people the, at the front. Yeah. The, yeah, no. the guards, yeah. Okay. While the door was closed. Okay, so it might be good. <laughs> out of character. Oh, I, thought, oh, oh. I, I want to yell out housekeeping. Yeah. Maybe uh, <laughs> free <out. laughs> Uh, do we still have our do we still have our robes? Uh you've got them in your packs, yeah? You haven't haven't done anything with those, you've kept them with so you. Emmerich's gonna put his on, actually. Okay. Oh. Um Wait. From where we're standing, Owen, can we see into the cave? Yeah, you can see partially the other way in. Um what you can see, because w- when you guys enter, I'll bring you across. Oh no, do you know what? If you're looking in, let me bring you across to the map now and I'll, I'll well, let you I see. I can't see it anyway. Only um people with dark vision. And I'll show you what you can see. It's darkness. Ah. <laughs> Let me bring you guys in. Because How this... immersive. Okay, I'll bring you here. Right, the abyss. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Very edgelordy. Here we go. This will be better. What do you mean edgelordy? Not edgelordy at all. And that's what you can see. Cool. Cool. Talk about shapes of penis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my char. laughs> oh, professional, oh, professional my Dungeons char. and Dragons players, everybody. <laughs> professional Dungeons and Dragons players. Uh, <laughs> we're here. Are we? <laughs> anyway, anyway, we have a good laugh every time we think anything looks vaguely like a penis. Uh, anyway, um, um, so, so, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I entered the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I think we've got our name for the episode. Can I enter the shop? Oh god. <laughs> um, that guy oh, that we god. saw that just peeked his head around the corner, is he yeah. anywhere to be seen? No, he is not. <laughs> oh, lo- uh, I-, I love that reveal you're doing on the map there, Owen. It's great. There you go. Oh, uh, it's actually, do you know what? I'm actually not being, that was not me being childish. I've only just looked over at. I was trying to do was have a dynamic lighting effect where you guys can see that you can't see past this boulder. <laughs> That's um, fair. <laughs> <laughs> we're just being we're just being rat bags. <laughs> uh, it's a very dramatic shadow. Um, You're welcome. I try hard, guys. <laughs> I look at everyone. Um, it, it looks good. It's just that my my internet's giving such a low res image right now. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, uh, um, so we can't. I think we've lost the element of surprise, guys. So I actually get my torch out so I can actually see. Um, I uh, cast light onto my hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, sorry. I look at do it. I look at my. T- I start bringing my torch out <laughs> and I start trying to like unsuccessfully light it. Pull out, <laughs> pull out Flint and Tinder. You know, I, like, I, I, you know what I imagine happens? Every, uh, I, I kind of like look at you and then look at my hand and then this like glowing sun just occurs and I just. Give you a wink. <laughs> so then, what happens is, as I'm doing this, I just notice, like, in the peripheral vision, I start seeing light, and I'm like, sort of squinting, and I look up, and I just see Azure just chilling there with this huge light source in his head, winking, and I'm just like, ah, oh, fine. And I like, put away my torch and the flint, and I get up to feed it, and like, I, I gesture to him to go inside and lead. Yeah, I'm gonna walk over to walk up to here, on absolutely um let me quickly reveal what you can see as you look deeper into the cavern uh there we go i'd say probably all of that area is visible to you now um what you can see as you look inside the cavern um the entrance to the cave is broad and tall uh, and the ceiling the the initial entrance where you guys are now is very very quickly begins to drop down to only about 1.5 meters uh no sorry not 1.5 meters uh, to about two meters tall it's pretty pretty um uh short ceiling as you guys get in a little bit closer those rocks that you can see on the map are actually columns of stone rising up and helping to hold the ceiling uh, in place these sort of five foot 
columns. Um, looking inside, you don't hear or see anything apart from the cavern um, with your passive perception. But if you wanted to listen out or make a perception check, you're more than welcome to. I might make a perception check as I'm uh, moving in. So, yeah, yeah and uh, yeah. as I'm up close with Azura, because I'm definitely sticking to him, I will oh help him out. And thank God I just mentioned I was going to help him out because. Wow. He did a really yeah, another, bad roll. Another nat one. That is really bad. Roll, roll again, though, because I am, I am helping you out. Unfortunately, Will Dix, uh, I didn't specify I was helping him. Oh, oh, oh God, no. God happening? So, Will Tix, you can smell Mine was for hearing, not for... Yeah, I was going to say... I'm oh, for hearing or smell? Which one did you want to do? Uh, hearing, because... Oh, yeah, so um, you can hear, coming from inside the cave, dripping of water on stone. You can hear the occasional shuffle, occasional um, sound of gravel drifting down from the ceiling. Um, very hard to make out any voices or any um, sounds that you would normally attribute to people or creatures. Um, Life, yeah. Yeah, very, very hard, especially outside with the, the sort of wind coming on off the top of the plateau above. As we were inside the cavern, as you look around, the stonework is rough and coarse. The ground underneath seems to have been mined out um, a very long time ago, but has then since been used uh, by this group. So basically the way that the stonework has been uh, dealt with, it looks like there's old grooves that have then been reworked recently. Um some footprints moving in and out of the cave but very hard to determine where they have from and where they're going that's all you see unfortunately so was that was that, was that just for Azura? yeah that was just Azura so, and Will Tix said it as well yeah I imagine because I'm helping Azura out yeah. I'm imagining that like as he's like trying to listen in and observe things I'm I'm sort of annoying him while like trying to like help him <laughs> like I'm like I'm like Azura like do you, do you hear that and he's like yeah yeah, not now though. Uh, I really need to con. Yeah, but whoa, whoa, whoa! Have a look at this clue over here, Azua. <clears throat> and I'm like ignore, like annoying, annoying him a little bit and just throwing him off. That's why he got such low rolls. That's the way I look at it. Um, Emric being a little pesky. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that, that's what happens. Well, I, uh, Azua, well, do, you, I, do you see that? Uh, look at look at this. Look at this clue over here. Whoa! Yeah, that, that, that's that's what I. Oh that's no! What I sorry, that's just a rock. It's my mistake. No, all I can tell is someone walked in and out, and uh, they definitely tried to make this uh, hole bigger. But can you hear that? It's been here for a long time. Hey, shh. Can you hear can that? You hear it? Oh, oh no, no, that's no, me. Okay. That's my own I echo. Hear, I'm sorry. I can hear you. <laughs> this is great. Uh, Will Dix, what 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 can you hear? Well, uh, I I can't hear many other creatures or anything like that. I think there might just be the uh, possibly just the one man that we. We saw head in. It's, you can hear us, two idiots. Oh no, I I, I ignore you, Emery. He's he's got a filter. <laughs> he's got a filter I, I, built in. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, no, it's. I've uh, I I feel like there might only just be the one person guarding the the cave itself, or just maybe a caretaker of some sort. All right. Well, let's uh, let's keep moving, and hopefully, we uh, only encounter the caretaker. On we go. Okie dokie. Um, you guys here can move up and I'll reveal things as you go. Perfect. Are these like columns? They're columns, yeah. So you can see that large stone columns are built into the... Um, are built into the ceiling and into the floors. These massive chunks of rock and granite. Uh, they seem to be part of the natural makings of the cavern but they're very hard to sort of see around until you get up quite close to them it looks like there's they, they're held quite in in a, in a deep shadow especially with the light from azua's hand uh, and if anyone did light a torch the the light moving around casts these moving dancing shadows and you find yourself sort of quickly looking again and, and realizing no it's just a shadow moving there's nothing there uh it has a bit of an unnerving effect um as you guys reach that point there though um you hear a voice call out from the darkness uh, from down behind uh, a column further in front of you. Oh, stop there. That's quite far enough. Who are you? State your names and your business here. Hmm. 
I'm going to have you guys roll initiative just to go into a turn order while we do okay, this. Okay, that's a good that's idea. A good chance for it. Oh, my God. So make sure to Jeez. click on your... Is it not your day today? It is not my day. It's all right. I always roll crap. Oh, shit. Okay. No, I don't. You all roll <laughs> well. Ah. <laughs> what the fuck? That's hilarious. I'm sorry. I, I rolled two nat ones and two twos. Yeah. <laughs> This has been, come on, beyond 20. It doesn't beyond like you today, does it? It's not like me. Okay. Alrighty. Um, perfect. Uh, who are we missing from this? We're just missing Azua. Azua. I'll Azua, just add yeah. you now, Azua. What was your... Oh, five. Five. Yeah, not a very good night for you, Azua. I think you've got a fun coin uh, as of now. You've had, what's that, four fails in a row? <laughs> yeah, five. Five okay. fails in a row. That's definitely. And he's a fun rolled one. a five, six, and a five, and yeah. anything else that was before. Um, Two ones. And he's rolled a five for stealth as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, he deserves a fun coin. Yeah. So ah. you see, um, I will bring this down a little bit further. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. There we go. So stepping out from behind the shadow of the column um, is Lucius Malfoy. No, it's not. It's a, it's a man <laughs> wearing the the robes of the cult, uh, and marked upon his shoulder is a claw symbol. These dark black robes and this mask, this very dragon reminiscent mask with these long horns that spiral up. Uh, this particular mask that he is wearing is a deep azure blue. Uh, oh, yeah, azure blue, huh? Uh, a very deep blue. Um, uh, and he steps towards you and no pulls one, um... out. Oh, sorry. oh, yeah, keep going. No, go ahead. I was going to say he pulls out um a scimitar and looks towards the four of you no one Stop. else oh, yeah there you go i was gonna say no one else don don the robes did they just you yeah <laughs> just perfect you. great stop right there step no further who are you and what is your business here um it is now emmerich's turn oh crap oh actually who has higher dexterity Mira does. She's first. Oh yes, Mira. Mira's got plus two. I got That's minus right. one. Yes, Mira, you're first. Forward and say in draconic. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, let's see. What'd she say? Uh, hail. We are here to check on the operation. We're from the rear guard. We're going to send word to the main body of the. Uh, platoon spreading out. Use Power that show. Yes. So we come from Langdedrosa himself. Is that correct? Langdedrosa has spoken to you recently? Oh, yes. He has. And he sent you from where? Well, we're going to be joining the rear guard of the caravan. And we just wanted to check everything was okay before we head out. And Langdudrosa sent you here to do that? It was our orders. Because Langdudrosa is in the cave below. Oh, okay then. I'd say that any more, <laughs> any more, I'd say any more uh, talking on your part here I... is going to start. Yes, Emmerich. Okay, so seeing that that conversation has literally probably fallen out, I'm going to walk up. It was a really good try, Claire. 5, <laughs> 10, 15. Yep. I'm going to take my cape off, my cloak, mm -hmm. in a um, sort of a bit of an extra extravagant way. A bit of a flourish. A bit of a flourish. I'm going to take my helmet out. I'm going to say, hello there. Oh, I am the embodiment of death. And I'm going to strike him down with my helmet. Before you, <laughs> before you do that, Claire, you do have... Uh, I'd say that your speaking was your free action. Um, you right. still have an action. I was, I was going to say, I just blasted him in the face. With a oh, go for it. Once do it. the conversation went sour. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can you do that? Um, as Can I still do my yeah, monologue? Yeah. Exactly. And yeah, just yeah, as, yeah. I'm about to, as just as I'm about to um, come yeah. down with the helmet, suddenly a fire bolt streaks past my face and hits him. Can we do 12, that instead? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, because the fire bolt doesn't hit him. As Mira fires this bolt towards him, 
um, and you pull out your halberd, he ducks under the weight of the firebolt. <laughs> um, Emric, do you want to roll me your so, attack? As, and Mira, as you, you, serve your, as a... you serve your bonus action too, Mira. What would you like to do with it? Sorry. Yeah, okay, do Mira first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bonus action, I will move up to see a bit further down here. Yeah. As I watch the streak of light for the firebolt fly overhead, I just want to see it, like, go down the hall. Oh, that's <laughs> a cool idea. See if there's anyone idea. behind him. Yeah, you can't see with dark vision. Can't that's a cool him. idea. Oh, and I almost ran into the wall. That was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, you can see a little bit further down here. What am I saying? There you go. Seems to be a little narrow stairway heading down. Uh, yeah, Emmerich, make me an attack. So yeah, just as I'm about to bring a bit out, about to like, I've done my monologue and I thought I've done a pretty yep. cool little scene. This fireball comes streaking past. He miss, he dodges it, and I just sort of turn to Mira and go, oh, "What the? You messed up my monologue." And I sort of turn around, and go, ah, and then I just strike at him with my my halberd. Yeah. So let's see. Mm, do not think a 10 hits, does it? 10, 10 does not hit. As he ducks under the firebolt, he spins back around and dodges your halberd attack. <laughs> You'd have to do better than okay. that if you hope to hit me, eh? So as he says that, yeah. I want to see if I can hit him with my bonus action attack yes. with the bludgeoning edge. Absolutely. So as he's saying that, he gets cut, cut off if I hit him. No, a 4 won't hit because that's 4, four plus 5. Again, he nimbly dodges through. Um, very, very nimble, very quick. Um... I just sort yeah. of mutter under my breath, you little shit. And I actually, I'll come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's Emric's turn. It is Dragon Claw's go. Stepping out from the shadows, from behind the pillar, is another Ooh. of these figures dressed in the robes with the armor, wielding a scimitar. Uh, and he is going to move... So that's going to be within range for you, Emmerich. Yep. Do you want to make your I'll, opportunity I'll, attack? I'll hit him. Uh, eight plus five, 13. No, it doesn't hit. Damn it. As he moves in towards you and Wiltix, um, emerging from the darkness, another one of these cultists runs forward silently, wielding his scimitar. Uh, he swings it around, making one attack against Emmerich, one attack against Wiltix. So he'll do Emmerich first. Uh, does a 17 hit you, Emmerich? It does, actually. That's four my, slashing uh, damage. That's my armor class. Okay, yeah, so four slashing damage. Not too much. Um, and the next one against Wiltix. Does a 16 hit you, Wiltix? No, it does not. Okay. Uh, it would have only done one slashing damage anyway. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, as he swings through cutting uh, Emric, he then pulls the scimitar around, expecting to easily cut through this small gnome in front of him. Uh, Wiltix brings up his blade and parries the attack off smiling as he does so um this figure this cultist looks towards you both and completely silently stands there ready to attack uh wiltix it's actually you next i'm uh gonna well with my parry i'd probably try and give him a bit of a stab with my good old trusty rapier time for a repost uh that's an 11 to not quite miss. enough to hit sorry wow really low low rolls yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Really low. Um, <laughs> this is not good. Because we because we couldn't get the Twitch stream working, isn't Five, it? Five, four, and eight. Mm. Yeah. Um, the eleven just uh, again as 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 you as you parry his attack, he parries yours straight back, looking you dead in the eyes, not making a sound. Um, not much else I can do there because if I move out, I'm going to get an opportunity attacking against me, aren't I? Yes. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just going to have to try and hold my ground and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait where I am. <laughs> Alrighty, Azua, you're up next. Uh, cool. Um, I'm going to move up to the This one guys. here, yeah. Yeah, let's move up. I'm going to make an attack roll uh, with my quarterstaff. Hit Alrighty. Him. So Come rushing on. up from the entrance to the cave, Azua, yes, hey, 20. Hey, natural 20. Hey. Not a natural, sorry. 16. Unnatural, unnatural. unnatural 20. Not a, yeah, unfortunately not a natural. Um, and you're wielding it two-handed, I imagine? I am, yes. You crack down the quarterstaff on top of his head. Um, let me quickly mark that off. As you smack it down against him, this hit um, three people at once. Oh, actually, Azua, you have advantage on this attack, just so you know, because Emric is flanking him. Oh, Would you like to make okay. another roll in case you do get yeah, it? Yeah, might as well. No, that's okay. okay. Uh, yeah, you crack it down against him, dealing some damage against him. Um, 
that's your attack. Anything else you'd like to do? Yeah, so I'm going to make a uh, bonus action unarmed strike. 13 is not quite enough to hit Sorry this to punch. Them. Oh, yeah? Is Leosin up up with us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that he's uh, all yep. like the back there just chilling. I'm like, yep. Me, yep. I, I knew, uh, I remember. Uh, let me quickly get Leosin in. Thank you. <laughs> do you want me to control him? Let me control him. Uh, yeah, right. Sure. Let's do that. You're and the just same quickly... person after all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll um I'll give you Leosin's character sheet in the future. I'll, I'll put it on uh, Beyond 20 for you. Here we go. Um, I'll just roll Leosin's initiative. Not 20. Not 20. That's actually fine. No, that's okay. Because he'd be then going after the thing last time. So he was going to wait for you guys anyway. So that's actually perfect. That's actually exactly what yeah, should have happened. He would have waited for it. He, yeah, he exactly. would have waited for the Yeah, so Azua, you, you carry on. Um, oh no, so you've made your unarmed attack. Unarmed strike, 13. Yep. Yeah. Uh, anything else on your turn, Azua? Uh, at this point, no. Okay. All righty. Next up is the one who first spoke. Um, he is going to rush forwards up to Emmerich, who he perceives as being uh, the greatest threat. Um, he is going to make a scimitar attack. Now, um, these uh, these dragon claws have pack tactics. They have advantage on attack rolls against a creature if at least one of their allies is within five feet. Woohoo! They also have a feature called fanatical advantage once per turn. The cultist makes a weapon attack with advantage on the attack roll and hits. It deals an extra seven damage, an extra two d six. Okay, damage. that's fun. So this could be bad. So I'm going to roll this. Oh dear, I'm guessing a nineteen hits you, Emric. Yeah. So he's going to use the extra two d six. This is going to be a total of fifteen slashing damage. Fuck me, Jesus. that's half my health. And then his next attack, Jesus. he's going to make another scimitar attack against you, um, but this time without the fanatical advantage. I'm guessing a three doesn't hit you. No. Sorry, uh, eight eight doesn't hit you. No. Um, Man, the, the... I entered this cave on thirty-one health. I'm on twelve. Oh, Jeez. <laughs> um, the yeah, as he, as he goes to swing at you, it's parried away. Uh, Leosin is going to rush up. Um, now let me just bring Leosin up on my screen. Here we go. Uh, yeah, he is going to do this because it's really cool. He's going to rush around here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Uh, he's got 40 feet of movement. He's going to rush to here. Um, as he runs around the pillar, dodging past Azua and Wiltix, dashing underneath Emmerich as he takes this strike. Uh, Leosin looks towards the uh, cultist, dead in the eyes, and goes, You had me tied to a stake for three days. I'm going to beat you up for that. And he summons these astral uh, ghostly arms that emerge from his shoulders. He now has four arms um, as these oh. ghostly angelic-like arms um, burst out from him, shedding this radiant damage, uh, shedding this radiant light around him. Uh, he makes some attacks using them. Um, so he is going to... Yeah, he's just going to attack with his arms. Perfect. Uh, do, do, do. 14 Damn. is the 14 is the uh, oh no it's only 13 nope he misses <laughs> oh my god <laughs> damn it <laughs> as he punches the uh, the cultist ducks underneath um, he'll do an unarmed strike using his bonus action that'll hit though uh, as he punches it directly in the face uh, unfortunately not with his uh, radiant arms that's his full turn next up is Mira Mira will come behind Pillar here. I mm -hmm. is a, she can get behind there. You see 23 cotton. <laughs> oh my god. I, yeah, okay, I made an assumption. I made an assumption. Uh, <laughs> but she'll just go there and then she will cast uh, Frostbite. Oh, thank god. Uh, at the two cultists and twin it so that it will hit both of them. Yeah, I make a con save. Uh, you make eh, eh, yes. So I believe con of thirteen. It targets only one creature. Doesn't have a range of self. Yep, perfect. You can absolutely yep. twin that. Um, twin for one or three points. Yeah. Uh, one sorcery point if the spell's a cantrip. So you're perfect. Um, cool, cool, cool. I will make two con saves. Uh, I'm guessing. 
Guessing a three okay. doesn't pass. No. Or a nine? Nope. Nice. Very nice. So it's two points of damage, but they have disadvantage on their next attack. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. that's really, really good because I their just... fanatical devotion thing is yeah. that, that fanatical advantage is that's once per news. turn. Once per turn, they can do that. Um, anything else in your turn, Mira? Nope, I'll just take cover a little bit. Emmerich, how you doing, buddy? Uh, pretty, pretty bloodied up. <clears throat> um, okay. Owen, is it possible for me to get flanking on this guy with the Osin there? Or uh, do I need to push? Or can I push my way there? You can you can just push through there. I'm happy for you to do that if you want to. And then now I'm going to be behind him. Yeah, that's fine. All so right. you, you just sort of dodge around nimbly um, past these two, and then, yeah. So does any of these look particularly stronger than the other? Or they no, look- they look about the same, and they also look okay. to be very similar. Um, they've taken very similar damage so far as well, I will also say. Okay, so how bloody do they, are they looking? They're not looking that bloodied up. Um, they look like they've taken a heavy hit. Leosin's punched to the face. His nose is now gushing blood, a large purple bruise spreading across his chin. Uh, the one that's engaged with Wiltix and Azua, um, that uh, that punch from Azua, uh, the crack of the quarterstaff, has has um, given him a bit of a solid uh, solid bruise. He looks to be a little oh. bit dazed. So, yeah, they've, they've taken a little bit. Yeah. Well, look, I definitely want to hit this guy, though. Yep. So I'm going to look at him and go, oh, That bloody hurt, you bastard. And then I'm going to hit him with a halberd attack. Yeah. Natural 20. And it's a crit. Um, <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Natural 20. I rolled a, nat- I rolled a 10 as well for damage. Um, wow. So that's 10, 10, 20, 23 damage. 23 damage. Um, how do you want to do this? Yeah, I wasn't even going <laughs> to smite. I was thinking about it. I'm like, he already sounds like he's taking a bit of damage. So, um, all right. So... As he's hit me and I'm gushing bl- out mm-hmm. blood, I've pushed my way through to get into a better positioning against him. And as Leosin's come in and taken the attention, mm-hmm. I'm literally going to use the spear point and thrust through him, yep. piercing his heart and lifting him off the ground and yeah. then discarding him on the ground. Yeah, as you fling his broken and ruined corpse against the wall behind you. Um, the silent cultist who you had previously been engaged with, the one who is now engaged with Wiltix and Azua, turns around and looks at you and watches as you do this and looks you dead in the eyes, hatred burning within them, but still completely silent, only the panting of his breath as he uh, as he fights. And as he's staring me blank in the face, mm-hmm. I'm going to attempt to thrust the end of my halberd into his yep, face. Absolutely. Let's see it. <laughs> Uh, I do not think an 8 will hit. Not quite enough, sorry. No, that is very fair. Um, yeah, that will end my turn. Mm. His turn. His first strike. Doesn't like you, Emery. You just killed his friend. Um, I'm going to roll a d6. So 1, 2 is Emery. 3, 4 is 0, 5, 6 is Wiltix. Yeah, so he doesn't like me because I killed him, but then also he's taking yeah. a bit of damage from the other guys. So yeah. I can imagine so he's... one attack is going to be against you, Emric. One attack is going to be against Azua. Um, All right. He's going to do an attack at disadvantage against you, Emric. Oh, perfect. Nine doesn't hit you. Nope. And then he's going to do an attack against uh, Azua. Uh, he does not have advantage or disadvantage, just the normal attack. Oh, Azua. I'm he guessing... Uh, a Crit. Guessing, uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> guessing, uh, guessing a 25 hits you, Azua. Holy Azua's shit, yeah, yeah. Bad, it awful will, uh... day. Uh, that's gonna <laughs> be just gets worse. <laughs> 10, 10 slashing damage as this scimitar cuts across you in this flurry of movement. Um, as he swings towards Emric, Emric parries it with his, uh, with his halberd. Cultus snarls silently, turns towards you, Azua and then stabs forwards with this scimitar cutting across your chest um, in a very, very bad cut. Um, <coughs> that's all he does for the moment, which means it is Wiltix's go. Um, so the same guy here, is he the one that took a big chunk out of Emmerich as well as... No, know, that's the one who's just been destroyed by Emmerich. Ah, okay. All right, well... Obliterated. Um, okay, well, the other guy, considering he's seen right in front of me again, I'll uh, grab the rapier and take another shot at him. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? No, oh, an eleven. Jesus. Uh, oh, yeah, that is up. that is why not. Unfortunately, yeah. 
<laughs> Fuck! We are, we are having a great night. <laughs> I'm pleased we didn't call ourselves High Rollers, because that would not be an accurate... Uh... I think that's already been taken. I think oh, it yeah, is. been taken, yeah. I, I think High Rollers is, is perfect, though, because like, we don't roll high at all, but when we do, <coughs> we get a crit. Yeah, that's true. I think that's um, their joke. They've taken that joke I'm, as well. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I'm sure that there is an asterisk next to their name that says sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Terms and conditions apply. Um anything else in your turn, Will Tix? Yike. No, that's not fun. No, I I I think that would be it for me for the moment. Alrighty, in that case, it is Azua. Yay! Uh I'm gonna make an attack roll against the uh Peanut who, uh, <laughs> the peanut. Me. I thought you might. And because he has got two people on either side of him, have advantage. Absolutely. Look, I, I need that today. I really, I really do. Oh, I probably should have gave Wiltix advantage, actually. Wiltix, you should have advantage. Would you like to quickly re Oh my god, god. son. Take Beautiful. That. I'll get, I'll get <laughs> Wiltix. Yeah, I'll just say, just see if I yeah. actually do get a shot at him. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, do, please. I don't think you'll kill him regardless of what you get. Oh, no, no. I was going to say, does Azul kill him? That's all. But, Both of uh, you together, I think, are going to do this. Wiltix, do you want to quickly re roll me your. Just roll me a d20, and we'll Chris. have to it. Hey! Oh, shit. 20. Oh, no, 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 that's perfect. So, yeah. Uh, so, so Azua, actually, you wouldn't have been able to do this, but now with Bultix's help, you guys have got him down. So that's minus five. Okay, perfect. Um, as Wiltix stabs forward with the rapier, Azua, holy light burning in his eyes, pure divine rage flashing across him, brings this quarterstaff down in a furious push. The light shining from his hand, lighting up the quarterstaff as it breaks this person's skull, cracking through their rib cage and down, pushing the body against the floor. Not even a cry or a gurgle as the light leaves their eyes. As you just smite this person in a single hit. Oh, um, fuck. You guys are out of initiative. Yay! I, I um, can't really just walk across him and... Uh... <laughs> Leosin <laughs> uh, looks to you, Azua. Wow. Uh, remind me not to get on your bad side, brother. Uh, you can. You never could be on that side. <laughs> Obliged. Uh, Emmerich, you look like you've taken a bit of a hit there. Oh, a little bit. Uh, it's all right. Just fix it up in a jiffy. And he, as he says that, I literally place my hand on my chest. Quickly, Azua, how much health do you have, by the way, just quickly? Uh, 14. Oh fuck! Out of, <laughs> out of a possible twenty-four. That's um. um because okay, look. as you as as you're speaking, um, Leosin steps forward and holds out a uh, a potion, a red potion. I um I actually I I I wave it off and go. It's all right. Give it to Azua. He needs it just as much as I do. As I put my hand on my chest and give mm -hmm. myself fifteen HP from Leon hands. So you see a golden light emanate <clears throat> from my hands and I sort of come through and just um my wounds start closing up and the bruising sort of recedes back in and yeah uh how hurt are you looking azua uh 14 out of 24 so um, leo some will place a hand on your chest divine light glowing as he heals you for three hit points which is his um healing hands because oh. yeah i just healed for 15 so i went from 12 to 27 now i'm near, near my h max hp again so uh, uh asmr if anyone's not aware um as a uh action once per long rest they can heal their level in hit points um so leosin uses all three to heal you as well oh, so azua can do that as well he's got I can, yeah that's how heal. i healed you last yeah last he used three hit points last time too true yeah well you might want to do that now <laughs> <laughs> i yeah I mean, uh, i'll use my healing hands as well so i'll bring myself back up to 20. perfect um you guys heal up and as you look around this section of the cavern i can describe a little bit more to see so um, the pathway continues very clearly down towards, um, I say down, uh, up towards the north um, east. And you can see that there is a cliff face um, about 20 feet wide and then a series of stairs curving round uh, just on the southern end of this cliff face heading down into the area below. Um, the cliff is about 10 feet high. It's not, not too high. It's sort of a subtle cliff. So is there anything down this bit? Um do you want to make me a perception check? Is um is there lights from Azua still? Just so I can actually see down there. Uh, yes. I, yeah. I can just cast. I'll, I'll just recast light. I uh, yeah. I assume that whenever you guys are in a dark place, Azua just casts light whenever. Uh, so it's only eight. Eight. Now, 
looking down just looks like darkness heading to the wall of a cave. Okay, um, I, I look at Azua and go, Azua, can you uh, have a quick look down here and see if there's actually uh, anything other than darkness? Because I can't see nothing. You know what I mean? My eyes, I, can't, I got little uh, human eyes. Yeah, do you want to make me a uh, perception okay. check? As a We're all not a celestial being like yourself. Very cleverly hidden into the rock is an alcove that's disguised to be the wall of the cave. Um, as you approach, you, you spot this pretty much straight away. It's from a distance, it's very hard to see because of the way the shadows fall, but as you approach, you can see that there is a pathway heading down towards the uh, southwest here. Oh, shit. Uh, and I reckon well, that's we... actually a pretty good spot for a, for a break. A little, little break? Yeah, little we've break been going here. for an hour and a half. I think that's a pretty good spot for a break. Um, yeah, we'll we'll pause there, guys. Um, I'll just bring this across to the main screen. We will be back for Episode 7, Part 2, in no time at all. Um, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. We will see you guys again soon.